What's going on guys? We're gonna do an updated what to drink on a keto diet video. Yeah, so if you've seen our alcohol video from the past, it's from like three years ago. Really long. And I've just, I'm a different human being. I've had a baby. And so, then there's a couple things that we're gonna mention that we don't have here. Yeah, there's one whole new category that seems to have sprouted up, which is like. We've partaken in it and I'm enjoying it. Yeah, we have like the ones from Aldi, like the. Are they good? I like them. It's a hard like soda, like sparkling soda water. Yeah, like a, like a twisted tea. But that's like gross and old news. It's like White Claws, Truly. Are they sweetened? So I'm gonna say there's four categories that you can kind of have now. Beers. Beers. Wines, liquors, and then like twisted drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Hard seltzers. Hard seltzer. Yeah, White Claw says 5% alcohol, 100 calories, two carbs. That's a pretty good value proposition it there. It is, because if you drink two of those, not spaced out over like two hours, but two of those in an hour, you feel good. Here's one thing you gotta remember when you're drinking on keto. It's also about the percentage of alcohol to the carbs. So like if you're yeah. drinking, we're gonna get to that in the beer section here. So like this is a beer that's- It's a new beer. It's 4% alcohol and it's low carb but the alcohol percentage is so low, you have to drink a lot of them. The first category and the safest is gonna be liquors. These are the lowest in carb, oh. highest alcohol. So yeah, they're just like your best bet. A lot of people don't like them, they're like mixers, they like, you know, mix them ups, all kind of fancy cocktails. Yeah. But if you can, which I have been learning to love a little bit more is scotch or rum or just like any kind of liquor you can just sip on its own. Yeah. Or sometimes like one of my favorite things is vodka and water with just like some lime or lemon. So VSL, vodka, soda, lime. Just water, V-W-L. Yeah, but vodka soda water is a little better. And soda water, not to get confused with tonic water, soda water is zero calories, tonic water has sugar in it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have made that mistake before. Liquor is gonna be the best route. So we have vodka and then scotches, there's gonna be rums, um, tequila, a lot of people love, that's a great option. You can mix them as Matt said. So like when we go out, I like to do like if we're, you know, in Las Vegas, I'll just do like vodka and diet soda all day long. Yeah, so pretty much all liquors are zero carb except for ones that have different things added to them. I'm gonna say like Kahlua. Kahlua, of course, that's not really even, what is that? It's a it's liqueur. Like, it has like milk in it or something, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. But I mean, people like to add that to their coffee. So yeah, anything crazy that isn't just like a 40% alcohol liquor might have some carbs. And then I guess let's talk about what our favorite mixers are. So we mentioned soda water. Oh, there's a hilarious scene in Sunny in Philadelphia where Charlie sees orange juice. Dude, I thought you said they didn't have alcohol. Look, they got screwdrivers. Oh no, Charlie, it's just orange juice. Just yes. wow. orange juice, like yeah. the mixer? Yeah, yeah, people drink it. People drink it, yeah. That's crazy to me. When was the last time you drank straight mixer? Oh, I had a Diet Cola mixer a while ago. Oh, did you? So there's water, there's soda water, uh, diet sodas, Energy drinks, we used to do a lot of energy drinks. Yeah, I think- If you're really trying to go hard, energy drinks and alcohol, it's gonna get you where you wanna go. But anything really zero calorie, like there's those ice drinks. I like Zevia or Sprite Zero. Those are my faves. Sprite Zero Vodka. Yeah, that's a good option. I'm not that into rum and coke. After drinking a ton of Captain in college, I've lost my taste for rum. The next up, you have the wine category. So this one, Palo 61, this is actually a low carb wine that I bought. So they have a rosé, they have a red, and then they have a white. And all three of those we've tried are really good, if you're interested. Um, but I think the only place they don't ship is Michigan. There's a few companies that do this and so there, there's different ones. So there's like, you probably heard of dry farm wines. Mm -hmm. This is a different one. This is Palo 61. This is an actual vineyard, to yeah. my understanding. They make the wines and they guarantee that they're low carb. Dry farm wines just like imports and curates the wines. They don't actually grow them and make them themselves. And this, they, this one is actually cool because it has a nutrition label on the back. It's not to say though that you have to get specifically low carb wines. No. It's just sort of a peace of mind thing yeah. that you're for sure everything you buy from this company is low carb, no sugar added, that type of a thing. Because I don't know a ton about winemaking, but basically the sugar gets eaten in the fermentation process. But for the really cheap stuff, especially I think some of the red wines, they like add grape juice and like different yeah. things. They're not just making it the way you're supposed to make it. They're right. using shortcuts and stuff. So there could be a lot in some really cheap wines, there could be tons of sugar, but in most dry, even the cheap ones, in most dry wines, it's gonna be a few grams of carbs per glass. Four to five per five ounces of yeah. wine. White is 
generally less. lower in carb than red. I personally love to opt for white anyway. Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio, those are the two white we stick to. And if you're out, just ask for the driest white wine or driest red wine they have, and they're not gonna steer you wrong. We've done that time and time again. And there is usually a description of like the flavor profiles on it. You can just read through that, make sure it's not like anything overly sweet, sometimes like fruity is a signal for it being um, sweeter. Yeah. So that's what I'll usually do. And you gotta just make an educated guess or you can like find a few that you know are low carb and just stick with those too. Yeah, so I've invested in getting just some Palo 61s because if we like to enjoy some wine, we'll drink the whole bottle together. And at that point, once in a while, I think it's worth investing in it. It's a little more expensive. These are like 22 or something per bottle, right? So a lot more expensive, but yeah, worth it to me. A lot of the time, Matt just loves to drink beer. So I like to get these little bottles and this is also not like as budget friendly as getting a bottle, but I like Sutter Home. I get the Sauvignon Blanc or the Pinot Grigio um, and I'll just drink one of these. I think this is probably more than a serving, right? Like six ounces maybe? It's hard to tell. Uh, it's probably five, yeah. six, maybe. I don't know. Then we got beers. Beers I think are the most contentious one because everyone who loves beers knows that low carb beers suck. Well, yeah, so we have one here that's actually like low carb. It's an IPA too, which is cool. Yeah, this is new. But there's like Bud Light, there's Coors Light, there's Miller Light, there's like the light beers. Yeah. And you can find the carbs for those beers online. And yes. we actually have a video, don't we? Yes, we have a specific beer video. Yes. So the thing is, here's sort of my evolved opinion on these. So this is a, like a handcrafted, this is Dogfish Head, one of my favorite breweries. They make a low carb IPA. It tastes decent, it tastes really watery, like all low carb beers do. And it's 4% alcohol. So to get a little buzz going off 4% alcohol, you might need four of these probably. And you're still definitely saving on the carbs. But for me, what I've been doing lately, what I like to do, full carb beers. But this, for example, this is 9% alcohol by volume. And it's a 90 minute IPA, it's probably one of my favorites. But this is gonna be 20 plus grams of carbs. But you're gonna need like one, and then maybe a, a drink of liquor, something like that. Depends on how hard you're planning to go. Yeah, all, it all depends on how hard you're planning to go. But to me, I'm just, and I, plus I enjoy this a lot more, so I'm like happier having more of an actual craft beer, high percentage alcohol. But like I won't do some like 4% stout or something like that. You know, it's gonna be 20 grams of carbs and it's still low percentage alcohol. But I just really hate these low carb beers. It's like a cost benefit analysis of beer. Yeah. I like trying some craft beers every once in a while. I like sour beers. Sour beers are delicious. Triple Monkey? Yeah, that's my favorite. That one's really, no, or Golden, Golden Monkey. Monkey. When I'm doing beer too, it'll just be one beer and then I'll just go to a glass of low carb wine or a glass of liquor if we're continuing to drink. A lot of it is how often you're doing it too though. So I don't do it too often, like once every couple weeks probably. So the most common question we get is, can alcohol hinder weight loss? And I think there's a couple things you wanna consider at that point. How important is weight loss? Is that goal for you? And how soon is it into like this new keto diet or this new diet you're doing? And then two, your quality of life. So personally, I'm not on a weight loss journey at this point. I am looking to just be healthy, maintain my weight and stay as fit as possible for my child. Drinking once a week, once every two weeks enhances my quality of life and we get to enjoy it together over a nice meal. If I was on a weight loss journey, I probably would include maybe drinking once a month and I would be very picky and choosy about it. Well, you gotta prioritize. Of course, drinking is not good for weight loss. It's actually not good for a variety of reasons. First off, it's empty calories. So like a shot of liquor is gonna be like 100 calories. Are you getting 100 calories worth of satiety? No, you're getting like almost negative, I would say. You're getting more hungry. It's gonna mess with your sleep. It's just gonna mess with everything, making you overeat more in the future. So like, it's not great for weight loss, but could you do one glass of wine with dinner? I know a lot of people do that just every night, one glass of yeah. wine with dinner. Maybe you could do that. To me, it's all about how bad do you want the goal you're aiming toward. I'm more in like coasting mode. Like I'm, my body is not one of my goals at this current point. I have other goals that I'm shooting towards. Drinking once in a while, once every couple weeks is fine with me. But like if you're drinking every single night and you're 200 pounds overweight and your big goal is weight loss, you probably need to reduce that dramatically. I would say the first thing to cut out is just the drinking altogether. It's easier said than done, obviously, but yeah. That would, that would be good. Let us know down below. Well, we also got White Claws and seltzers. Oh, I forgot the hard seltzers. 
and we haven't tried those, but those seem like actually a really good because if you're looking at, they're comparable to like low carb beers. So this is 3.6 grams of carbs for 4% alcohol. They're better than beers. Yeah, those are two grams of carbs for 5% alcohol. Plus for me personally, like I can't drink more than a few beers or else I'll just get really full and like, I don't feel like drinking anymore. With those, it's probably different because it's just more of a seltzer. I'll drink two of those. I'll feel really good. And they're super like light and refreshing. Pour it over ice. It's great for the summer. It's just, I think it's so much better than beer and it's basically beer. So like if we did drinking games and stuff, I feel like that's what I would. Oh, we could. I would uh, transition to hard seltzers and cut out the beer. You're 30 together. years old. You don't need drinking games anymore. Yeah, I do. Once in a while. Yeah, Mega loves her drinking games. <laughs> hard seltzers. I think probably hard seltzers is probably the best option. I've never tried one. I need to try one. You do. Tonight is the night. Let us know below what's your guys' go-to drinks for me, just to summarize. Probably, I don't know. I've been drinking wine more. We like split a bottle of wine and watch a movie. That's kind of nice. I mean, my beers are definitely in there. We've been doing less liquor. I've been doing less liquor, but now that I'm looking at these, I kind of want to get back on the liquor. So yeah, my go-tos are, if I'm out, a vodka Diet Coke. And then if I'm at home, it's wine or hard seltzers. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Comment below. Let us know what your go-tos are. Do we miss anything? We probably missed a lot of stuff. What's the best hard seltzer? You know what they probably need to do? Or no, they don't even let you do those energy drinks with alcohol anymore, do they? For locos? Oh, sleeper high alcohol kombuchas. <laughs> oh yeah, that's also high sugar too, but it's similar to a dogfish at 90 minute, right? Yeah, I don't get the, uh, I guess I don't understand the high alcohol oh, kombuchas. The one we have They're is super good. tasty. But are you supposed to just like drink a few high alcohol kombuchas or is it like you mix one in with your the rest of your drinking? Yeah, someone explain those to me in the comments. All right guys. That's it.